Welcome to our study series about the life of Paul the Apostle. On this episode named On to Jerusalem, we will learn about Paul's determination to go to Jerusalem for the religious feast of the Jews. I invite you to watch this episode as you will enjoy it will benefit spiritually as well. I also pray that it will be a blessing for your life. Stay with me, I will be right back. We are at the point now of the end of Paul's third missionary journey. After the moving farewell speech Paul gave to the elders of Ephesus in Miletus, he embarked on a ship that stopped at various ports. It stopped in Kos and at the island of Rhodos, and also stopped at Patara. But Paul wanted to arrive quickly and avoid port stops. So he boarded a ship sailing directly to Phoenicia. He arrived at the city of Tyre and stayed there with the believers for seven days. As usual, he was telling them the good news, teaching and preaching the word of God. The second thing I would like to say is that wherever Paul went, he met with the brothers and sisters in the faith and was welcomed by them. And this is the warm Christian spirit. A true believer is accepted by Christian groups everywhere. Because we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. So one does not feel alienated among his brothers from a different culture or from another nation. And this is a very good and beautiful message. During his third missionary journey, apart from his ministry, he devoted a lot of time to collect offerings for Jerusalem since the believers in the city were in dire need and he wanted to break down the barriers and to build bridges. He knew there were some Jews called Judaizers who wanted the Gentiles to firstly convert to Judaism before they could become Christians. But Paul opposed this and by the Gentiles donating, he wanted to prove that they cared for the Jews in Jerusalem as much as they cared for their fellow Gentile believers. In the city of Tyre, the group in the church there warned Paul to not go to Jerusalem as the Holy Spirit had given them a word of knowledge. But Paul insisted on going. From Tyre, he sailed by the Mediterranean to Ptolemaeus, not very far away. And today it is called the city of Acre. He also stayed in Acre for one day, encouraging and building up the brothers and sisters there. He also continued on the Mediterranean from Ptolemaeus to the port city of Caesarea, a very large city that was the Roman capital of Palestine. When he arrived at Caesarea, he and the brothers who were with him went to the house of the evangelist Philip. Let me remind you that Philip was one of the seven deacons who were elected in Jerusalem in the first church nearly 20 years earlier. It is likely that he and his daughters took up residence in Caesarea to carry out the ministry. Philip had four daughters who were prophesying and his house was open for ministry. Imagine the scene with me. Stephen, the first martyr, had been a deacon and a friend of Philip. Paul, or Saul as he called at the time, 
had stood in approval of Stephen's stoning. Now Paul is accepted and welcomed to visit Philip at his home. When the Spirit of Christ dwells inside a person, it breaks all the barriers of hatred and resentment and it turns all that into love and forgiveness. So here we now find Paul in the house of Philip the Evangelist. The believers in Jerusalem heard of Paul's arrival. One of them named Agapos was a prophet and came to Caesarea to deliver a very important message to the Apostle Paul. Agapos was not a total stranger to Paul. Paul knew him because he was the same prophet who came to Antioch in Syria as recorded in Acts chapter 11, verse 28. He said there would be a great famine and he collected contributions that Barnabas and Paul took to Jerusalem. Now we see here again Agapus appears on the scene in a very dramatic manner, similar to the prophets of the Old Testament. Being led by the Holy Spirit, he took Paul's belt and tied himself up both his hands and feet and say to the apostle thus says the Holy Spirit so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles the prophecy of the prophet Agapus was sincere and true because it was fulfilled when Paul was arrested handed over to the Gentiles and stood before many courts. Yet the giving the prophecy did not mean that he moved contrary to the divine plan. When his friends saw the determination of the apostle Paul, they said, the Lord's will be done. And they submitted to the divine will. Take note, of Paul's words to this group who heard Agapus' prophecy and pleaded with Paul not to go. He said, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. His words are in harmony with what he said when he talked to the elders of Ephesus in Acts 20 verse 24 saying, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. And with what he said in Philippians chapter one, verse 21, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. When Paul first became a believer, Ananias had heard from God concerning him and foretold that Paul would face pain. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name and that he would stand before governors, rulers, and kings as well. The prophecy of Ananias was soon to be fulfilled. But the most important thing is God's promise to Paul that as he testified in each region, he would also testify in Rome. When I consider the character of Paul, I see that he is a truly unmatched person, a fantastic person, and a unique person. He did not give consideration to political matters or submit to governing policy or compromise for anyone. To be at the center of God's will was more important than life or death. He himself testified that he was compelled by the Holy Spirit 
and was going to face persecution and pain everywhere, but considered them part of his service. Friends, Christianity is not an easy road. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Also, the Apostle Paul said, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So it is natural and normal that when you speak of the message of Christ, you will face persecution because it is an exclusive message. God does not have several religions. There is only one way. You are either in or outside the circle of faith in Christ Jesus. You are either with or against Christ. You are either a believer in Christ and have eternal life or a non-believer in Christ and, and divine wrath remains on you. For the Lord, there is one way and Paul understood that way. Although he was once a Pharisee and a persecutor, his life was changed by the grace of the Lord. He started to testify about this one true way that is only found with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian life is full of excitement and adventure. What a beautiful adventure when we follow the Lord's will. We can trust that God is with us even in difficult circumstances. Today, I pray that you will consider the cost of following Christ. Are you truly a follower of Christ? Do you want to follow and obey Christ? Or do you pretend to follow Christ because you admire a certain thing or because you want an easy life? If you have any comments or questions, we would love to hear from you. Tell us your thoughts and communicate with us. If you need spiritual help, we will gladly help you. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow and Lord willing, the day after.